My name is Kat Albrecht. I'm with Missing Pet Partnership and I'm here today to talk about how to humanely trap a lost dog. Um, some of you may be thinking, why would you trap a lost dog? Well, believe it or not, there are many cases uh, where people's pets escape and are panicked because they have a fearful temperament. And, uh, and it is oftentimes necessary to trap them. They're too afraid to come to people. They will eventually respond to food. Uh, so humanely trapping is one of the methods that can be used for that. Now some animal shelters have uh, dog traps like this, some don't. Um, at Missing Pet Partnership, we train pet detectives and partner with rescue groups and shelters in, and teach them different techniques on how to recover lost pets. Um, but the humane trapping has been around for a while and so most of those organizations know how to do that. Um, but the purpose of this is to talk about um, why we prefer this particular trap. This is a, a true catch dog trap. Um, we like the true catch because it's got the powder coating on it as opposed to um, some of the other uh, dog traps that are uh, lighter steel. Um, or stainless steel and tend to rust and tend to be louder when they're triggered. This when I trigger it in a moment you'll be able to hear that when the door closes it's more of a softer sound so less likely to, to panic a dog and freak it out. Um, this is also a collapsible crate right here. I went ahead and assembled it here just to show you how, what, what, how it sounds when it triggers. One, one thing that we recommend with the trapping is um, uh, is that you put something um, in the area where the dog is going to step on because some dogs are going to be hesitant to step on the wire. Um, so one thing you can use is corrugated poster board like this and being able to set it down there so that when the dog steps in here it's stepping on something flat. You could also put a towel in there but you want to make sure the towel or if you use cardboard or anything else that you put in here that it doesn't interfere with the door and that it does not cross over onto the trigger plate which is up here. Uh, you would take your food or your bait and you would put it at the very end just beyond the trigger plate. Uh, this particular trap just has the one door to enter. Um, there are some other traps that are made that have um, what's called a wildlife release. The other end you can by maneuvering a handle lift it up. Um, some of the other traps, in fact the big giant dog trap that they make doesn't collapse like this one does. It's just a stationary um, you know, a big giant box and you need a big um, vehicle to be able to transport it. That would be for, it stands about this tall and that's for larger, taller dogs. But this trap here, uh, this particular one, with I've got it set open right now. If the dog, if we were to bait it with the food, um, the dog would come into the trap. You may want to cover the trap as well, like with a blanket. Oftentimes a, a blanket with the owner's scent or even the dog's own blanket would be helpful. But when the dog comes in, I want you to hear as it steps in and steps on the plate how um, loud this is not. took a moment for me to find the right uh, area to press on. I had this set probably on too uh, heavy of a sensitivity. It would take a heavier dog to step on it. Uh, there are ways that when you set the, the trigger here that you can set it so it has a lighter sensitivity to it. Now it may have sounded loud to you, but trust me, when you, when you compare the sound of these traps to some of the other metal traps that slam close, this is a much kinder, softer type of a sound. So um, if you are taking our missing animal response training course at, at Missing Pet Partnership and you intend on renting out traps, we strongly recommend that you have a um, uh, rental form that you use that would include having the, the customer leave a deposit for, to cover the expense of the trap in case it's stolen or damaged. Um, and we rent out our humane equipment for $25 a week and then we have a security deposit that covers the cost of the trap. Now this trap is somewhere in the range of $250 to $300 um, and so if 
if we want to cover the cost of that, we would have them leave a second check, a deposit check, to cover that amount, like for $250. And then when we get the trap back from the person that has, has borrowed it, we would give that check back to them. Um, having the traps is a great way for you to be able to help um, capture dogs that are too afraid to come to people but will respond to food. Um, through our MAR course, we teach a step-by-step -step plan and how to do that. So if you want more information, uh, on our training program, you can go to missingpetpartnership.org, click on the training button, and you'll find the information about when we offer the next MAR training course. Thank you.